Ahoy there, YouTube! I'm back again today for another gameplay video. Today I'm very excited because I'm going to be playing Folklore The Affliction uh, Solo. Now this is an upcoming game from Greenbrier Games coming out on Kickstarter very soon. And it is a, it is a role-playing game mixed with a board game mixed with an episodic content kind of game. Uh, so this is a game that's going to take place... Uh, it's going to have six stories in there, and each story is going to have numerous different chapters. And you're going to be taking control of a character, exploring this map right here, uh, getting into fights, leveling up your character, leveling up your, your skill tree, gaining special abilities, and different weapons and artifacts, and all sorts of cool stuff like that. And it's a very meaty, ambitious game, and I'm going to be trying out the game actually for the first time uh, and, and letting you guys know what I think about it. So, first and foremost, we've got our handy dandy rule booklet. It is 36 pages, double sided, full color, and I just got done uh, reading it. And it's an incredibly daunting rule booklet when you're first getting into the game, but this is this is an incredibly ambitious game. And I gotta say, the rule booklet is, a, is very well done. Um, just having everything in front of me and reading the rule booklet, it read pretty smoothly, and I could pretty much figure out how everything was going to work just from reading the rule booklet, which is incredibly important, obviously, with the, with a game like this. So, also, next you might notice the map. Now, the map is uh, is is large and scaling, and there's different cities in here, and there's different locations that you're going to be going to, and there's woods and all sorts of crazy stuff like that, and essentially works kind of like an MMORPG map, or a role-playing game map, um, like a video game, where essentially you can go along the road and you're going to be encountering adventures and that sort of thing, and when you go into town you'll be able to go to the inns and do various different things, uh, and also you're going to be able to go to different locations. So when you go to different locations, you're going to kind of zoom in, and you'll actually be setting up like uh, maps like this and fighting creatures on the ground so uh, it kind of like zooms in and then you're in a different location and that's when you're going to be moving your little uh, guy around which obviously I, I imagine from Greenbrier Games is probably going to be an absolutely gorgeous mini when the game does come out. So uh, there's tons and tons and tons of components I, I can't even I've mean, got the camera lifted up so you can see uh, the board but I mean there's tons of cards and chips and chits and uh, and monsters and all sorts of stuff that's going on here. I might not get too much into all that stuff. Hopefully in the review I'll be able to cover more of that. Uh, but let's just get to the gameplay itself. I'm going to be playing as the Avenging Madman today. And uh, each each player is going to get their little player card right here. And one thing that's interesting is that you can die. And when you die you become a ghost. Which means you can still help out your team but you're not going to be nearly as useful. Um, you're going to start off with a certain amount of Vita, which is actually what they call health. I'm not sure why they do that. You'll start off with a couple special abilities, two special abilities, uh, an item. I start off with a bandage, which you're actually supposed to mark on this little card right here, I do believe it is, but uh, I just decided to do that because it's a little bit easier and more aesthetically pleasing to me. Um, and then you're going to get this guy right here. This is really interesting. These are fun to read through, actually. Uh, these are all about your character. And one thing about this game that I'm already excited about is there seems to be tons of variability going on in this game. So we'll just read uh, the character that I'm playing as. Uh, but, but what's inside of here is you're going to have your description, and then you're going to be able to choose a character focus. So you can be an Avenger, you can be a Savage, or this guy can be an Inquisitor, or he can be a Bounty Hunter. And in my character, in particular, even if I do the Avenger, I still have two different options that I'll be to choose from so each time you play is going to be completely different now when you open it up you're going to see what you're going to start with and also over here when you go into city you're going to be able to into the city you're going to be able to do various different things so i can go to the inn or the market or the uh, the can't read upside down the physician or the tinker and uh, if i have enough money i'll be able to buy different things and different cards to heal myself whereas this guy the witch hunter is going to be able to go into different parts like the chapel and the gypsy caravan and do different things in the city so each character is going to play drastically different now on the back I alluded to it a little bit earlier you're also going to have a skill tree because you're going to be able to gain lore in this game and then you'll be able to level yourself up and gain special abilities and cards and all sorts of cool things um, incredibly ambitious stuff so I'm going to try and get into the theme of the game and I'm going to be reading aloud everything to you so I'm going to be reading my character the avenging madman the avenging madman has a soul driven mad by the lost at the end of a hard day's labor he fell asleep in the barn amongst bales of hay when next he awoke the sun shining brightly overhead the sight that greeted him will forever torment his memories his entire family massacred at night by something clearly inhuman but the body of his wife was not among the victims. Driven to the brink of insanity, he took his bale hook and followed the tracks to the land which is afflicted by things pulled straight from his nightmares. Rage is his purpose, and revenge is his weapon. 
I like it. I like it. So that's my character profile. Next, I get to choose a character focus so I can be an Avenger. Your newfound purpose is to avenge those that have perished at the hands of evil. Once per story, choose an option. You may not change it until the next story. So the options are the Avenger gives all other characters fighting the same creature as he is plus one damage or melee attacks. That's pretty useful, especially, uh, well, not so much in a solo game, but in a large group game. Or, at the start of a combat encounter, choose one target creature. As long as you do not change targets, you inflict plus two damage against it. So that's really good. Uh, that would be good for solo. So, Savage. Your rage becomes your most reliable weapon. Once per chapter, choose a creature type to focus your hatred upon. When hit by a creature of this type, they lose one Vita. You may add half the value of your current power points to your might rounded down. Uh, so essentially, you'll be able to focus your rage against a specific, specific type of monster, and they're all going to have symbols up here in the uh, the upper right hand corner. Um, so you know what? I think I'm going to be Avenger. I'm going to be kind of a good guy, going crazy with my bail hook, uh, just slashing away at everything. And by the way, I put this on the right side because if you put it on the right side, then that means it is currently equipped. And since this is a one-handed weapon. I could potentially have two of them equipped. So I'm going to be an Avenger, and I'm going to, at the start of a combat encounter, choose one target creature. As long as you uh, do not change targets, you can do plus two damage against. So I'm going to be a little bit more powerful when doing damage. Now, also on your card, you, uh, you're going to have uh, a special ability down here. So what does mine say? Insanity. You are compelled to fling yourself into melee combat, making you unable to use ranged weapons. You can never be deranged. Uh, so I'm going to be in the nitty gritty all the time. Now I do want to mention that normally you're not going to be moving your, your character token around this giant map. You have a special uh, token that's going to be representing your, um, what is it, your party. But since there's only one of me, I'm just going to use this little guy. It's a little bit easier. So next what you're going to be looking at is you're going to be taking a look at your story journal. Now this is a story journal I have. It only has two stories into it, I believe. Um... And there's going to be six. There's going to be six stories, and there are going to be numerous chapters. So this is going to be like a freaking book when it gets to you, because it's already you know, it's already like you know seven, eight, nine, ten pages now. Uh, so I'm going to read it, and we're going to start it off, and we'll play it, and uh, hopefully it'll be relatively smooth. As I mentioned, this is my first time, so you're going to have to bear with me. So the story journal, chapter one. Everything changes, and uh, the first, uh, the first part of this is really going to be a. Um, a tutorial so to speak so essentially it's just trying to teach you the basic mechanics of the game and how to play so this is a tutorial adventure that introduces players to the world of folklore and its game mechanics your group of characters arrive to the church of the crossroads having traveling having traveled a great distance to reach the isolated land afflicted by evil you are set on a quest to seek out the priest of the church of the crossroads who has disappeared after investigating a calamity in a nearby village so we're at the church we're trying to find a priest. Uh, chapter 1. The Arrival. You have traveled far, entering a territory of mountains and hills, forest and ancient paths. As you near your destination, an oppressive veil descends at the sky become dim. The stagecoach you hired, you hired approaches an old stone building with a belfry and enormous wooden front doors. The coach rolls to a stop and you exit to stand before the Church of the Crossroads. The church is an age-old monument and gateway to this ancient, mountainous territory. As you near the wooden doors you to head inside, you hear the sounds of a struggle from within. Hey! Uh, uh, I, I just made that up. Entering the church, you see an old curator cowering at the hands of a highwayman. They are ragged and filthy and are demanding food and valuables. So, uh, skill check. Uh, at this point, the group must make a skill check in this case. In this case, one character may try to pass speech 8. Roll a d10 and add any bonus under the speech skills shown on that character card. If the result is an 8 or higher, they have succeeded and chased the highwayman away. If they fail, the group must skirmish with them. Uh, so I'm going to take a look. And uh, as you can see, this is already starting to sound like a role-playing game. So my skills are in ecology and nerve. So I'm going to have to roll a natural 8, 9, or 10. So we got a big old bag of dice right here and other various different components, which unfortunately I don't know what all of them do yet. And we'll roll it up. And I got a 3. Apparently I'm not that much of a smooth talker. Probably because I haven't had water in a while. So unfortunately we are now going to have to skirmish the highwaymen. Uh, story skill check. Speech 8. 
You exert yourself as the dominant force and ask them to leave. They realize that the curator is not easy pickings and decide to take their trouble elsewhere. That did not, unfortunately, happen. So we are going to be... Uh, we're going to be looking at the chapter skirmish table. Uh, so let's see what is going on. Um, skirmish with the highwaymen. So we're going to look over here, and we're going to get our highwaymen out, and we're going to see what's going to happen. So we got the Undertaker there. These are actually in alphabetical order, so I should know exactly where it is. Uh, now these are double-sided as well. One side is going to be when you are facing them and it's, uh, it's on one of these maps. And then there will actually be little characters that you'll be moving around and, and fighting. And it'll be a little bit of a more of a tactical thing. And I believe these are probably going to be miniatures. Uh, however, what's really cool, and I haven't seen this in any other games, granted I haven't really played too many games like this, is that this side is when you're facing them and, and you're moving your little guy around and trying to fight him with your bail hooks or whatever, and this side is when you're doing a skirmish. It's a very simplified version of the other side. So let's see, we're looking for the highwaymen, and bada boom, we got ourselves the highwaymen. And we're not going to be doing this side, we're actually going to be doing the skirmish side. So we'll take a look at the skirmish side. With two characters, I'm going to roll a d4 since it's one character i'm assuming i'm still going to roll the d4 and that's going to determine where we're going to start on this little tracker down here this little tracker is going to uh going to decide what different attributes uh, the me uh, we i have i have sorry uh so let's see where is the d4 dice d4 dice this makes for great video right now. I don't see a D4 die. Hmm. Well. What in the Sam? What in the Sam heck? Alright, so we do not currently have a D4 dice. That must have somehow... I must have lost that somehow. I remember seeing it though, so maybe I dropped it. So we're going to roll the d6 dice and we will... Oh, there it is. It's black. It just threw me off. It's looking for red. So we got ourselves a d4 dice. We're going to roll it. We're going to see what's going to happen. And we got ourselves a 2. So there are no modifiers right now. The highwaymen are currently at 2. And it says lose 1d4 Vita if the total attack roll of the highwayman is 80 plus. They cause plus 2 damage. So... We have ourselves a skirmish, we got it set up, and now we're going to deal with the skirmish. The skirmish is a simplified combat mechanism, and I'm just going to go ahead and read this, partially for you guys and also partially for me, because I, uh, I have not actually done this before, as I mentioned. Find the How We Met creature card. One side is for encounters, using the miniatures, uh, which, here's the quick summary. Find, uh, roll the dice shown on the left of the card for the number of characters, blah, blah, blah. We've already done that. Place a marker on the skirmish counter at the bottom of the card for the roll you made. I just did that with the die. All characters choose to attack or defend, and you're going to have this little attack or defend token right here. Obviously, I'm going to be using attack because, well, it's head-to-head, -head, and if I don't, then he's just going to slowly wither away at me. So I would put out the attack token. Um, all to, 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 so we're going to do an attack. They successfully hit... They successfully... Uh, Attacking characters reduce the skirmish counter if they are successfully hit. So essentially, if I'm able to hit him, I'm going to move this down one. Uh, and once he gets to zero, he will be defeated. Uh, they, if they defend, they do not roll. So if you, if you decide to defend instead, you're going to gain a plus 10 defense. So when they do attack you after everyone else has attacked them, you'll have a higher defense against them. The leader rolls the creatures. Now, I haven't talked about the leaders yet because it's a solo game, but there's going to be different roles that other people take on. Like one guy will be specifically in charge of reading things, and one guy one guy will be specifically in charge of moving things, and one guy will be specifically in charge of deciding like where things get attacked. So each and every person is gonna have their own unique and different roles, which as you can tell is kind of a theme with the game. So oh we did this the leader rolls the creature attack dice and applies uh, any modifiers from the skirmish counter. All right, so the the highwayman is going to attack us first, and we're going to be rolling a d100 die, which sounds really cool, uh, but essentially is going to be this right here. You're going to be rolling a d100 and a d10, and we're going to see what kind of damage he did. So he's going to be doing 55 damage. Uh, so 
So essentially now what you're going to do is you're going to look on your character card and see what your defense is. So my defense is 39. So I am going to be taking defense. So how you decide that is you're going to roll this little d4 right here and you're going to take that much damage and lose that much veil. Uh, so I would now lose two. Now I do also have an option because of my special ability that keep it coming. Where if I'm willing to spend one power that I have on this turn, I can ignore one d4 attack this uh, this action. Uh, I'm not going to use that right now because that was a pretty weak attack that he had right there of only two. So I would just continue to bloop, take my two points of damage, and I'll be on my merry way. Now if he would have done 80 points of damage, I would have took plus two damage in addition to the d4. Uh, so at that point maybe I would have considered uh, you know canceling it out, but not quite sure. So the highwayman is attacked. He is still at a number two. He has no modifiers. And now I am going to boom attack him back because I am on the attack right there. And we'll see what's happening. He's got a defense of 40. And I have a might of uh, plus five, which I believe, yes. So that's going to attack. I have a 93. So I just crush this fool. Uh, so I do do a, a damage to him, um, which I believe, yes. And I would have got equal to 100, or uh, a higher than 100, I guess you could do potentially. No, I believe it's only equal to 100. Um, what would happen is it would count for two damage and he would be completely defeated. But unfortunately it did not, so boom, he's gonna go down one. So now I have minus one intense, uh, minus one defense, and minus five might. So I am going to be, I'm gonna be in a little bit of a precarious position. Actually, no, I believe he actually has that, excuse me. Um, so, all characters move those two. So he's going to attack once again. I'm still on the defense. And he has rolled a 400. That does not, <laughs> that does not sound right. As you can tell, I'm not, not the, the biggest role player. Um, oh, so that's that's a 4. Okay, he rolled a 4. You suck, Highway Man. So he clearly missed. So we're all good right here. Uh, I'm going to counterattack him again. And boom, 39. Which is, no, come on, a defense of 40 and my might cancels out because he's got, uh, I've got minus 5 might, or he's got minus 5 might. I'm not exactly sure how that works. Oh, I guess I will. No, we'll just assume and then hopefully somebody will correct me in the bottom. Uh, we're going to say that I have that modifier, even though I think it's him. So I think he actually would have that modifier, but wait, wait, wait. Wait, if he had that modifier, he would have minus 1 defense, which means... My 39 would be good, but granted I had plus 5 might, so we're just going to assume that I hit him, and boom. I have defeated him, he has been defeated. So, the first skirmish is over, the highwayman is dead, or down, or something like that. Now, um, so now we're going to receive the reward on the card. So for this particular reward, we're going to be rolling a d10 dice. And uh, we can potentially search, and if we get a 10, then we'll be able to search and get an item, which is not the case right now. So we'll move on back to the story. Uh, the curator thanks you for driving the brigands away and for saving the church from being burglarized. He explains that his area, that this area has begun to extract an unsavory element, but there are calamities far worse to the north, which is this way. I don't know why I just told you which way north is. Let's keep moving on. He says, the priest received this a few days ago. He left immediately to investigate. He lifts a covering from a table, revealing a bloody mass of fleur and f fur and flesh. So this is a story skill check. Uh, nerve. All characters resist the urge to become sick. Uh, so either you steady yourself against the revolting sight, you become centered and recover one Vita, so you actually heal one, which would be great, or your stomach lurches at the sight and smell of the dead creature. You realize that this is not the corpse of some ordinary animal. Unable to contain yourself, you throw up what is left of your last meal, Taco Bell, and lose two pita. Blah. So let's see what's going to happen. Now, I have nerve plus two, so I'm looking good right now. Uh, I, I obviously, I just saw my family massacred, so I've got pretty good nerve. This this wolf man is not going to bug me. And, yeah, I got I got plenty of nerve. So we're good. I don't throw up, but I do gain a Vita. Boo, boo, boo. All right, after recovering from the shock of such a disgusting sight, you examine it more closely. It seems unnatural, the curator explains. It is said that wolves have been seen devouring people in the north. A group of Austin hunters tracked this one down, but no matter how many arrows and spear tips pierced its flesh, it would not stop moving. They brought it to the alchemist first, believing it was bewitched by some evil curse. Its form shifted and changed it. 
changed periodically in starting phases. It only stopped after that stone was removed from its stomach. He points to a small pebble encased in glass and a pedestal near the table. Neither the priest nor alchemist know what it is, but they fear it is related to the source of the trouble in the north. Go to Austerlick and seek out the priest and inquire of the people where they found this creature. It is of dire importance that you find its lair. Here are a few coins to help you with your journey. Also, rummage through our cellar and see if you can find something useful to take with you. Make sure you come back when you have found the priest. Attention! Each character receives one coin from the curator. Woohoo! Um, I don't know if I necessarily have coins in the prototype version, or potentially I don't know what the coins are in the prototype version. Uh, so I'm, right now, you can't really see, but I'm scrambling for things to look for. I don't think I have coins. Um, I'm going to guess, oh well, yeah, I didn't mention these, but there's also a bunch of handy dandy little cheat chart, cheat cards right there. I don't think I have coins in this version of the game because I don't think I'm actually gonna be able to go into the ends and everything, which does kind of stink because I would like to really d dig my teeth into this. Ha ha ha, I made a werewolf fun. Uh, but yeah, so anywho, I would have a coin. Draw two item cards to find out what you discovered in the church's cellar. It's up to you to decide which characters receive the items. If you cannot decide, use the dice to roll. I already like this. So the uh, the leader is going to decide. We have our item cards right here. Let's mix them up. Let's see what we got. So we would have the salve and the pitchfork. Uh, so as you can see, we got salve, we got pitchfork. The text is really super tiny, so you can't really see it. Uh, pitchfork, normally a simple farmer's tool. It can be an instrument of death for those seeking vengeance, though. <laughs> okay. Uh, plus two damage. If your attack roll is 90 plus, then receive additional plus one damage. This looks pretty good. Uh, let's see. I'll compare it to my bail hook. A hook normally used for bailing hay has become a weapon seeking the blood of your enemies. Plus six might. Oh, I wasn't even adding that plus six to my attack. So this guy's going to be hitting a lot. Um... This one's going to be doing more damage, it really seems like, where this one is going to make it so that you're consistently going to be hitting. Um, but then I, I think I, this means I can sell this for 35 coins. I'm not exactly sure how that works. Um, but let's check, take a look at the other thing I got right here. We have a salve, an alcrid-smelling green salve made by the gypsies that can be used to mend bones and cure other strange afflictions. Restore 1d4 Vita or cure transform fractures or sicken the status. This one is the one I'd probably take if, uh, you know, if I were actually playing through everything. Just because I'm pretty happy with the bail hook I got right here. But I really don't want to have fractured or sickened or transformed. Partially because I don't want to read about what it does. But also partially because that's the smart choice. Um, because yeah. Uh, but granted, also like I mentioned, handy dandy little cheat sword. So I'm pretty sure I could figure out exactly what it does pretty easily. Oh wait. Uh, I actually get to keep both of these, don't I, since I'm playing solo. Yeah, solo game! Uh, yeah, so outside, you board the waiting stagecoach, which hastens your journey to the village of Ostalink. After disembarking, your driver hurries back from whence it came, anxious to be away from this troubled place. So where is Ostalink? We're going to move our group token there, but as I mentioned, since there's only one of us, we're just going to, uh, we're just going to keep that going right there. Uh, Austin Link, Austin Link, uh, oh, so I'll make the horse sound, oh, oh, <laughs> that was a long journey, so we're at Austin Link, and let's see, uh, move the group marker immediately to Austin Link, uh, page 17, visiting towns, whenever you enter a town, you may purchase goods and services by referring to the location reference card, any character with the wanted condition may not enter the town until uh, they pay 10 coins to remove that condition. Uh, so there are wanted tokens right here because you can become wanted, because as I mentioned, there's tons of stuff going on in this game. Uh, if you do not wish to enter a town, treat the town space as any other road space. You do not have to draw a road card if the group ends its turn on a town space. Road card? What is he talking about? Well, there's gonna be road cards because as I mentioned, you're gonna be doing a lot of traveling in this game. That stagecoach ride, was a luxury, I imagine. You're not going to be able to stagecoach too often, and normally you're going to be going along these little road tiles right here, and attempt in, uh, sometimes going off-road. So what you're going to have are these road event cards right here. I imagine there's going to be tons more when you get the game. Um, 
But from what it says in the rule booklet, they're very balanced to some be good, some be bad, some be neutral. Uh, there's also off-the-road cards, uh, which will have various different special things, and these are double-sided. For some reason, I, I, I don't remember why, but uh, yes, they're double-sided, and I, th I imagine these probably tend to be more boomer bust. Like, there's some, probably some pretty bad ones in here, but then again, you're going off-road in a place called... Uh, Raymanov's Woods, where vampires, or where freaking werewolves were found. So, you know, you're going to the Dark Tower. You clearly are prepared for that sort of thing. I'm mumbling. So, anywho, let's continue. Let's look at the, let's look at my character sheet right here and see if there's anything I can do cool in town for money. So I could go to the inn, drunk and disorderly. Due to your sometimes uncontrollable outburst of rage, you must roll a d10 whenever you visit an inn. On a roll of one or two, you have too many beverages and start a bar fight. The group must skirmish with a human mob and you cannot defend during the combat. So you have to be attacking. Fortitude. When you drink at the inn, you do not suffer the minus five might penalty. Uh, you can also go to the market and purchase various different things. You can go to the physician and cure madness or fast recovery. You can go to the tinkerer and buy uh, bracers or brass, excuse me, brass knuckles, high boots, iron claws, kukri knives. Uh, so yeah, I'm not going to do any of that though because uh, we're just going to keep going on and we don't have time to be messing with that. So we'll get to Ostelink's ailment. In Ostelink, you are regarded with cautious stares. You sense that something is wrong. The streets are deserted with the exception of an occasional townsperson hurrying home or a drunk vagabond asleep in the alley. You catch sight of a street urchin eyeing you from a side alley. Woohoo! You wave him over. Come on, big boy. And he hesitantly approaches. When you ask him about the town and why everyone seems afraid, he looks nervous and says, many people are worried because of the strange things that are happening. It is worse in the countryside and a lot of the farm folk have come into town. The inn is completely sold out. You then ask the boy what he knows about wolves and the priest, and he tells you about the many wolves sighting. He warns that some have claimed the wolves seem to change in the moonlight. The urchin says he knows nothing of a visiting priest, but that you might be able to find out more, find out more answers at the inn. So choose your path. There will be times when the group will have to make a choice, such as right now. You will not know the consequences until after the choice has been made. Follow the instructions in the dialogue box and then continue the story. If instructed to read a story moment, it is not required to share the information with the rest of your group. Although it is usually wise to do so unless told otherwise or you're a jerk. Doesn't actually say that last part. Also didn't mention any Taco Bell or anything like that. So choose your path. Wow, we're talking about choose your own adventure here and there's, there's quite a few of them just on this page three. So will you give the urchin some spare change? One character may give the street urchin a coin if you have one. The character to do so must read Story Moment 52. If you decide to be uncharitable, the leader must read Story Moment 14. So should we give this urchin a coin? I'm not quite sure. Uh, I'm going to pause right now and make sure that microphone is on because it's not blinking and that worries me. But I am going to mull on this decision and you do as well. Okay, delightful. The microphone is on. Sorry for the momentary delay. Um, Alright, so the urchin was helpful, right? He, he totally did help us out. He gave us valuable information. Um, he said we might go to find more in answers at the inn. Should we give him a coin? I'm playing a solo game. So, when I do defeat things, I'm probably going to get a lot of coins. I don't have to split with other people, so there's no need to be greedy. And besides, I am, a, what was it? I'm an Avenger. So I am an Avenger. I'm not a savage. So I will give him a coin, and I will go to Story Moment 52 at the back of the book. And Jesus, if this is, there's already uh, 99, there's a whole bunch of Story Moments already in here. So imagine when you have all six stories and chapters, or five stories and chapters, or whatever's going on. There's going to be tons of these. So 52, to thank you for your kindness, he says that the wolves like to hide in tall grass ambushing their prey. Be careful. Gain the blue story marker, which I believe is this guy right here. Story markers are awards that can either cause a positive or negative event later in a story, but players will not know which is the case until it is revealed. What? Don't read ahead in the story. A story marker cannot be given to another character. Once the story is completed, all story markers are discarded. Wow, that is cool. Um... I know many of you want me to read 14, and I'm debating right now if I should read 14 to you. Yeah, no, I don't want to spoil too much, uh, so we'll just, we'll just keep on keeping on. 
So true to the urchin's word, the inn is bursting with people and heated conversation. Most of the patrons look to be farmers, with the occasional merchant in the crowd. The room goes quiet as you enter, and you sense that you are not welcome. The innkeeper speaks. What's your business here? You tell the crowd that you are looking for information, specifically about the missing priests and strange wolves that have been giving the town trouble. The innkeeper growls. Growl. Growl. We don't know anything about a priest. Uh, we can take care of a few wolves without any help from the likes of you. You notice several of the patrons look uncertain. We have no rooms here. You can have a drink, but afterwards I suggest you, uh, you keep on keeping on. You move on. Story skill check. Trickery. Not everyone in the crowd is happy with you sticking around. A bottle flies through the air right at you. So, uh, trickery. Story skill check. A random character. You deftly dodge the incoming projectile. The bottle shatters against the wall behind you. Luck seems to be with you. Gain plus one on your next search roll. So if I get a 7 plus on the trickery, uh, I do that. The bottle strikes you in the head. Oh, wow, that hurts. That Wow, that hurt. Lose 2 Vita. So let's see what's going to happen. Bloop. Yep, not doing that. And trickery is not a particular thing that I have leveled up or uh, skills. So I lose 2 Vita. Boop, boop. What a jerk. Uh, the assault by the crowd has upset you. They are more confident since somebody has made the first move. They are now getting ready for a good old-fashioned bar fight. So this is a choose-your-path sort of thing. So if you decide to calm down the crowd to prevent somebody from getting hurt, read Story Moment 10. If you decide to teach those peasants a lesson for being uncooperative, read Story Moment 41. I've already been good to that uh, for that street urchin. Let's get into a good old-fashioned bar brawl. Let's see what happens when I go to 41. Um, if you're gonna tell, I am getting into this. I'm really enjoying digging this. So 41, you don't have time to waste on these farmers, but a fight is inevitable. So you decide to take the first shot. Bar fight! I like how it says that. It actually says that like you'd say a fight in school. Bar fight! <laughs> skirmish with a human mob and apply a minus one to the skirmish encounter. Oh, man, so I gotta do a skirmish. All right, so let's go get the human mob and let's see what's gonna happen. Uh, I think these are not an ordinal abomination, bad perform. Human mob! So we are not dealing with a full human mob. We are dealing with a skirmish human mob. So they have a defense of 32. Let's roll our handy dandy four-sided die, uh, which was going to get a minus one modifier. And it is a two. So we are at a one. So they are going to be doing uh, minus one damage. Uh, so, yeah. So they are going to start off with the first attack. I obviously am going to be attacking because, as I mentioned, it is the only, the only person here. So we're going to roll the 100-sided die. And they got a 69. Giggity. Uh, they do attack me. Uh, so they are going to be doing a D4 damage. So we'll roll that up. And they're going to be doing bam, four points of damage. Wow, I'm already at 20. Um, so this might be a good time to use my ability. Uh, my ability right here. Which will allow me to ignore one D4 damage from an attack. Now I'm not exactly sure how the power works. Uh, I'll be brutally honest about that. Uh, so I do have one power. I'm just going to put a little token on this to signify that I've used one of my powers while I'm in the town. And you have or one of my five power points while I'm in the town. So I'm going to ignore one D4 damage from an attack. And boom, uh, I'm not going to take those four points of damage. Because that would knock me down to 16, which would be kind of stinky. Did I really just say stinky? All right, so now we're going to roll myself for my attack. And don't forget I have my bale hook, which uh, my pitchfork is not equipped, so we're not using that. And let's see what happens. I got a 770. I'm really bad at reading these. Uh, their defense is 32, which means, boom, you sit down, old man. When I come into your bar, you show me respect. I have successfully knocked out the entire human mob. Uh, probably just a couple people in it. Uh, so, yes, I've knocked out the human mob. And uh, what happens next? I believe I get to roll a d10. Uh, yeah, d10 to see if I can search for something. So d10, if I get a 10. Oh my goodness, I did get a 10. So let's, we gotta go to our, we gotta go to the rule booklet now. Uh, and what are the card and search to find an item by rolling a 10. Oh, search to find an item. So yeah, yeah, yeah. we're just gonna assume, well, no, we'll do the rule booklet. We'll do it by the book. So we'll, uh, we'll go to our handy dated rule booklet. Uh, I do, one thing I do want to mention about the rule booklet is I wish that it had an appendix right in here on this blank page, which hopefully they will add there. Um, so let's see. We go to skirmish encounters. We got our encounters. These are for the big encounters where you have to set up maps and do all this sort of stuff. So we're looking for the skirmish, which I believe is near the back, if 
I recall correctly. Uh, yes, yeah, skirmish combat. All characters receive their reward listed on the skirmish card, which I don't believe this one has anything listed on there. Oh, three coins. Whoopsie daisy, we were supposed to get coins from the last one. So we got two coins from the Highwaymen, which I still don't have coins to do, but we also get three for this one, so we would up to six coins right now. Um, actually five since we gave one to the Urchin. And then we are going to search for a creature type on a D ton. I find an item. So, if I can get a D10... Wait, does that say a D10 plus a D10? Does that mean I need to get two D10s in a row? That can't be right. That, that's like a... What is that? A 1 in 100 chance? Something like that? Alright. Let's see. What does that say exactly? All characters receive the ward listed on the skirmish card and can perform a search for each creature type. On a D10... Oh, 10 plus, they find an item. So if I get higher than a 10 on my search, then I find an item. Uh, so yes, D10, let's see what I got. I got a 10! Yeah! Natural! Double 10s! That's what I'm going on. We searched for an item. Let's see what we got. We got Quicksilver. Apply this metallic silver substance to your weapon. Gives it the, the power to inflict greater harm to your enemy. Use on a melee weapon to inflict plus one damage for one encounter. That's pretty nice. We're, we're racking up some cool items over here. Um, so yes. We have successfully gotten involved in a human mob skirmish, and let's keep on keeping on and see what happens. So, alright. After peace is restored, a farmer approaches you nervously and says, You priest passed through my land inquiring about the way to Nurian's Hollow. I told him of a shortcut I know. A day later, crazed wolves came down out of those hills, devouring my livestock and attacking my family. We ran here to Osterlink to find help, but, but everyone is too scared to leave town. If you agree to destroy those wolves, I, I, I'll tell you the shortcut. Can you spare the time to help? Choose one. You decide that you cannot spare the time to help him with his woes. Read story moment 13. Choose two. You decide to help the farmer with his troubles. Read story moment 85. Alright, so he's going to show me a shortcut how to get somewhere. Oh, what do I want to do here? You know what? Since we're already probably about 30 minutes into this, I'm actually going to do the one that I probably wouldn't do. Normally, I'd want to, I'd want to go to the farm and do some more and explore. Uh, but I think for this one, since I am going to try and keep it on the shorter side, I'm going to decide to ignore the guy. You decide uh, you decide that you cannot spare the time to help with his woes. Read Story Moment 13. And I might be wrong. It might be the same either way. But then again, it's Choose Your Own Adventure. 13. You feel terrible for turning your back on the man. I clearly don't. I don't care. Screw this guy. Uh, no, it's kind of sad. He seems like a good person, but your main priority is the priest. Yeah, you gotta have priorities. If he, uh, if he is in danger, you must get to him with haste. You prepare for your departure to Nurian's Hollow, where you know, now know the priest was heading. Continue the story by reading Choice One: Journey to the Hollows, uh, which is right here. You depart the town of Ostalink for the caves of Nurian Hollow. You do not know much about them, but you have heard rumors of dark things that lurk within. <laughs> world Map Travel, page 16.7. Characters travel to various locations by traversing the world map. You may move via the relative safety of the road. They say relative with quotes, which can be dangerous. They can also travel to off-road areas of the map, which can be even more treacherous. During each leader's turn, they move move up to their stride value, which is found on their character card. Granted, that is unless you go off-road, in which you go slower. Um, after movement ends, the leader must draw a road event and read it out loud. Traveling off-road is not recommended for the story due to the danger. If you wish to do so, please consult the manual. And I will, I will not do so because I don't want to consult the manual right now. <laughs> uh, so yes. So we are going to go, we are heading to Durian's Hollow, which is right here. And we are in Ostalink. We have our handy dandy character who is uh, right there. And we are, our, we can see right here our stride is four since I am the leader. Uh, and while yes, I could go off road and be there in two turns, instead I'm going to go this way and go one two three four and i'm using the road right here and that would be the entire turn and now i would do a road event so we got to see what this is all about so let's read a road event and see what happens campsite you find a campsite hidden in a grove of trees roll a d6 this sounds good right one to three the camp was recently attacked and the source of destruction is still present skirmish with a werewolf okay it doesn't sound so good anymore uh four through six the group rests safely all characters gain 2 plus 2, temp or gain 2 temporary beta. 
gain two temporary Vita. What does that mean? Two temporary Vita. I don't know what that means as opposed to regular Vita. I'm just going to assume it means regular Vita. Even though it clearly says 10 Vita. Oh, I don't need to keep track right here. Duh. My, my, I don't need to do that. My, my power is at four. But I would assume since we're resting, it would go back up to five. But anywho, let's roll a d6 and see what happens. Uh, where is the d6? Bada boom, bada boom, bada boom. We got ourselves a four, which I believe means we will not be skirmishing a werewolf. Yeah, that would be a good first night. Uh, so the group rests safely. All characters gain plus two temporary Vita. Woohoo! 22 temporarily. I'll uh, put that on the bottom. And uh, now we're on to the next turn, which means I'm going to be doing one, two, three, four. So once again, you're going to have another road event. We'll see what happens. And this one, Eye of the Storm. A hailstorm pounds down upon you. Each character must pass Ecology 5 to find shelter. On a failure, they lose one D6 Vita. A failure, they lose one D6 feet. Okay, Ecology 5. Uh, it shows a yellow die, so I'm assuming I roll the yellow die, maybe? Oh, shoot, I got Ecology plus 2. Yes, yeah, score! So 4 plus the 2, bada boom. We pass, which means I don't take any damage at all, uh, which is great because I think... Yeah, rolling a d6 could really hurt. So once again, I have successfully lucked into this. Yeah, my guy is awesome. Go Avenging Madman. Uh, so he's going to go four more spaces. One, two, three, four. And he is now at Nurian's Hollow. Let's see what happens. Let's continue up our story at Nurian's Hollow. Oh no, we're getting chapter two. I don't want to get to chapter two. Uh, all right. So read story moment eight. After a short journey, you arrive at Nurian's Hollow. Read story moment eight. So... You have arrived at Nurian's Hollow, but the cave entrance has a collapsed. You attempt to clear the debris, but it is hopeless. Do you turn back and help the farmer, or try to find another way? Another way in. If you decide to turn back and help the farmer, read story moment 59. If you decide to find another way in, read story moment 1. <sighs> if, I have to, if I have to go back to help the farmer, I'm going to have to draw two more road events. You know what? We're going to try and find another way in. We're already at the cave. You know, it took us two freaking days to walk here. We, we almost got attacked by werewolves and there was freaking a hail. No, we're, gonna, we're just going to do one. Searching the area, you discover an old burial ground set in the hills of the mountain. Burial grounds are always a good thing, right? Time to investigate. Near the entrance, you come upon an old man with a shovel, div digging a fresh grave. A dog sits by his feet. You approach to ask if there is another way into the caves. Any one character may pass speech 10 to learn of an old mausoleum deeper inside that is an opening caused by a quake a few years ago. This is the only way in he knows about. On a failure, he feels you have talked down to him and decides to teach your group of meddlers a lesson. Skirmish with the Undertaker. After you receive a good whooping, he tells you about the mausoleum entrance mentioned above. <laughs> Alright, so... Um, skip to the Into the Hollow section of the story. All right, so I'm going to roll a d10 and try and pass this, which I doubt I'm going to do for speech. Two, failure. Uh, so which means we are going to be skirmishing this old man. We're going, to, we're going to be giving him a whooping. I like how it just assumes you're going to give this guy a whooping. Granted, he is one Undertaker, and I am seriously called the Avenging Madman. Uh, so Undertaker. Oh, he's got a defense of 55. Oh, no! All right, so two characters. Oh, you do this divided by two. So he's not going to be too high. Uh, where's my four-sided die? We'll see what happens. All right, I got a two divided by one. So he is one. So he has plus six might and plus six defense. I'm assuming that's him. So he is really an old codger right now. So he's going to attack me with our hundred-sided die, and we'll see what happens. He has rolled a 90. Straight up 90. Man, he is ticked off. Um... So we're going to lose two D4 Vita and one D10 coins. I'm pretty sure that's how that works. So, man, this guy is really ticked off. Uh, lose two D4 Vita. Where's the D4? Right here. Two D4 Vita. Man. So we lose one health. That's a great start. And one health. Yes! We lose two health. Screw you, old man. All right, so now we're going to lose two D10 coins, which obviously doesn't matter since we're not purchasing anything, but let's see what happens. We lose eight coins, so we lose all of our money. That kind of stinks. Uh, granted, we do get six back when we defeat them, but still, that kind of stinks. Um, so, yes. So now, 
He has plus six might, plus six defense, so he's up to 61 defense. I believe that's how that works. And we're going to roll up our dice and see what we do attack-wise. We do it 27, a 33, a 30, uh, 38. So we do nothing, which means he's going to attack us again. And he gets a 56. 50, yeah, 56. So he's going to attack us again, so we're going to lose more Vita. So we got a 1. Man, we're doing really good on that. We're doing 5. Uh, and I'm actually going to ignore 1d4 damage from an attack. So he's only going to do 1 point of damage. So we're at 19 health. Let's attack this old man. Come on, old man. I'll beat you up. And plus, we'd lose more coins, I think. So we have... Is this 100? It's a 10 and a 0. No, that's not 100. That's not how that works, right? No, because that'd be 108. Man, we stink. All right, he's going to attack me again. Oh, well, let's see what he does. He gets a 20, 52. You suck, old man. You're so powerful. So this old man, is, he is really taking me to the woodshed. A 1 and a 4. Um, I don't believe this is one-time use, so I can ignore the d4 from uh, an attack. So I'm actually going to use another might, and I'm going to cancel out that 4, and I'm only going to take 1 point of damage. And we're going to fight this old man again. Come on. Give me something good. Beat this up, this old man. Fudge! 13! Come, wait, no, 10. 10, no, that's, that's a, no, that's a 10. That's a 100, right? Oh, I'm so bad at this. No, no, no. Zero, zero is, is, yeah, zero, zero is 100. So I did a 13. So once again, he's going to attack me again, and he gets a 65. Come on, old man. Leave me alone. Uh, so he's doing three, he's doing two, so he's doing five points of damage. I'm going to cancel out both of those. Boom, boom. Uh, I think I can do that. I could be wrong. Uh, hopefully somebody will correct me if I'm doing that incorrectly. And let's, let's keep, let's fight this old man. 20! God, are you kidding me? Wow. All right, so he's going to attack me once again, and of course he's rolling a 74. Why not? So let's see what he's going to do. So he's doing three points of damage. He's doing four points of damage. We'll cancel out the four. I had no more power this turn. Uh, so he's doing one, two, three. You might see what happens when you die, which I actually don't think anything happens if I'm a ghost. I think you only have a ghost uh, in two-player games. But the, the rule booklet really doesn't go too much into the solo gameplay. So I'm kind of winging it, which is why I've got a lot of questions. Uh, but they did say it was soloable, so I wanted to learn the core mechanics before I played it with uh, multiple players. Uh, let's see, 53! I, God, he's got a defense of 55! Wait, okay, 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 here we go. I've got 53, plus I've got 5 might, so I'm at 58, plus I've got 6 might with my bait hook, so I'm at 64. Now he's 55, plus 6. You're freaking dead, old man! Jesus Christ, well, I beat him up, man! So I gained 6 coins, but I'm sure he would have took all the rest of my coins. He really walloped the heck out. I beat up an entire mob of townsfolk and this undertaker with a freaking shovel just whew. all right so let's keep moving on <laughs> all right so we are at uh, oh we were at story element number one skip to into the hollow section of the story after he received a good whooping one of us got a good whooping he tells you about the mausoleum entrance mentioned above skip to the into the hollow section of the story so i completely skipped the farm uh, which has rabid wolves and scarecrows and a bunch of search tokens, a bunch of cool stuff right there. Uh, and I'd actually be using that one, uh, which I kind of wish I would have done. But now, uh, continue onward into the hollow. Oh, there's more stuff over here, man. Uh, the path leads into an old burial ground. You see the mausoleum that holds a forgotten entrance into Nurian's hollow. An open grave is to your left. You approach the door to the crypt, hoping to quickly find the entrance to the cave you were told about. Oh, oh, so I actually am going to be digging with a real map. All right, let's grab this out. We're going to be dealing with this map right here. And let's see, it is not this one. Yeah, this is going to be the map that we're playing on. And uh, this is the exit zone right here. The start zone is down here. So my little guy is going to go bloop, right there. Um, we've got two search areas where we could potentially search. And that's where these cool little, where these cool little guys are going to come into play. And one goes right there. Uh, those are... Nice looking magnifying glasses, if you couldn't tell. And then one is going to go... One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Right there, I do believe. It also says skill check right here. So I think maybe you fall into a hole or something. I'm not quite sure. All right. So check out all the map features listed on the next page. Get all characters to the exit zone in order to continue the story. But walk quietly. The dead are stirring. Ooh. 
See the on this map dialogue box below. On this map, your skin crawls Ew. as you feel tension stirring the air. The dead are restless today. At the end of every turn on this map, the leader must roll a d10. On a roll of one, two, or three, the group must skirmish with a decaying dead. Oh, you knew. All right, so the uh, first thing we're going to look, we have four stride. Um, our stride would be, but also other people would potentially be able to move faster. So, for instance, uh, her stride is also four stride. So that's a great freaking example. Uh, let's take a look at the witch hunter. His stride, maybe it's different. No, his stride is freaking four too. All right, so uh, I'm sure some of them probably have different strides. So here we go. Uh, the exorcist. He has. You know what? They all have four stride. But I think there's gonna be more characters. Maybe I'm not sure. Uh, so yes, four stride. But I guess there are some stuff that would modify your stride. Now that I think about it. Uh, so yes, that's probably why they're the same. Um, so four strides, so we're going to go one, two, three, four. Now, uh, I am going to go over here and search just because I want to see how that works. So now we're going to roll the d10 to see if we have uh, stirred the dead. We have a four, and we did not stir the dead. So that's great. So next we go one, two, three, four. So we go to the search token, and I'm going to have to get into the handy dandy rule booklet to see how the search tokens work. I think you have to roll uh, the, uh, the d10. I do believe, but uh, I'm going to look through the rule booklet real quick, and then I'm going to talk very fast as I try to distract you from the fact that uh, you're just watching a guy looking at a rule booklet. Uh, but but I hopefully everything is becoming clear. All right, so the search shit, terrain shits, uh, condition tokens. Nope, that's not what I'm looking for. Rolling dice, character rolls. As you can see, uh, you know I can go through this. The rule booklet, lots of pictures, lots of illustrations, lots of examples. Um, really looking good. Uh, okay, so this is a skill check. Uh, rolling a d10, success is, is, is achieved if the value of your roll equals or exceeds the target value listed on a challenge. Uh, is there a target value listed on these challenges, maybe? Oh. Oh, okay, yeah, actually, never mind. I don't need to go through the handy data rule booklet because this tells me exactly what I need to do. Yeah, I'm going to give that a big thumbs up, Greenbrier Games. Uh, I just need to be not noob enough to look over here. So map skill check. There are two skill checks, any one character. You see that the grave has been dug up, but why? Many of the graves in this place are extremely old with headstones barely legible, but they look to be recently disturbed. They deserve a closer look. So um, I'm going to be trying to roll for an awareness of six. My, I do not have anything that's going to impact my awareness, so I need a natural six. And uh, let's see what happens. I have a four, which means I'm going to be reading Story Moment 16. I'm going to guess that there's going to be something living dead coming at me. I don't think it's going to be nice that there's a leftover sandwich. You lose your footing and fall onto the open grave, impaling yourself on a shovel. Impaling, that's a, that's a hard word. Lose two Vita, then read Story Moment 90. Ouch. I'm running out of Vita here, people. I think I'm at like 14. I have no... Yeah, so... Two... Oh, I think I would... Maybe I... I don't know if I go back up to five or not. Not quite sure, but we're, you know what? We're just gonna keep it down there. So we're gonna go now to 90. Inside you see a half desiccated corpse. I don't know what that means, desiccated? Maybe it's desecrated corpse. Oh yes, it's desecrated, that's, that's a small typo. Inside you see a half desecrated corpse whose stomach has been removed and viciously chewed upon. There's a glint of something within the gore. You reach inside. Yeah, of course I'm reaching inside. Hey, there's something shiny, let me get that. <laughs> Uh, you reach inside, trying not to vomit in disgust. Your hand touches something round and hard. Pulling it carefully out, you discover an old yet beautiful pearl ring. It is covered with dry blood, but it still seems to shine. You feel a compulsion to put it onto your finger. You cannot resist. Gain the red story marker. Uh, which I believe is... Oh, these... No, are these not double-sided? Let's see. Red story marker. Red story marker. Um, maybe I don't have red story markers. Not quite sure which ones are the red story markers. I don't even know if these are blue story markers. Let me check. Back to the rule booklet. Um, so essentially, I have just fallen into a grave, impaled myself on a shovel, found a dead body with its stomach rotting, and then saw a ring in there. I was like, hey, I could use a new ring. And put it on, and bad things are probably going to happen in the future. So let's see. Story markers. What do you look like? And as I wanted to, I, I didn't actually mention this, but I think you probably picked it up. Um, everything you see here. No, that's actually an infection token. Good. I don't have an infection. Uh, everything you see here is uh, 
is a prototype form. So uh, a lot of the art's not final. A lot of the components uh, might not be included in here because they're not going to have impacts with only two of the chapters in here. So I'm going to guess that this is one of those things that I, that's just not in the story yet. So I would currently have one blue good marker, one bad red marker. Um, then we go back. So I get myself out of there. And uh, let's see. Oh, where are we? There we go. We are still moving. So we have gotten out of there and we now are like one, two, three, four. Uh, the question is, oh, we got to roll to see if we wake the dead. Shh, don't wake the dead. Oh, we woke the dead. Son of a biscuit. All right, so we are going to have another skirmish, Undertaker, Human Mob, Highwayman, Abomination. What am I looking for again? Uh, Bat Swarm, Decaying Dead. Yeah, that sounds right. Uh, ooh, Flesh and Ghoul, that one sounds bad. So we are dealing with the Decaying Dead. They have a defense of 38, lose 1d4 Vita. If the attack roll is 99+, plus, they explode with negative energy, causing 2d6 damage and ending the... Wow, 2d6 damage. That sounds painful. All right, so uh, we're going to roll our d4, see where this guy's going to be set up. And, of course, he's on the 4. Fantastic. So he's going to be doing plus 1 damage. Uh, ooh. That really hurts. All right, so he is going to attack us. Obviously, we are on the offense. Let's roll these dice, and hopefully we get lucky and we get the highwayman. He rolls a 23. My defense easily squashes that with 39. Uh, so we're good. No damage at all. So now I'm going to attack him. Let's see what happens. I roll a 41. His defense is only 38. Plus, I got my base bail hook and my might. So we're good. And we do one damage to him. Boom. Take that. So he comes back at me. Swings with a 16. Yeah. 16. I think that's either 106 or 16. Pretty sure it's a 16. Really bad reading the dice. Uh, so let's go back. Boom. 99. Oh, wait. <gasps> no. No, are you kidding me? Did I really just do a 99? Actually, I think I did even more than that. I technically did a hundred and I did a hundred and ten, I think. Uh, all right. If the attack roll is no, no, oh, that's if he attacks me and does that. I'm pretty sure. If the attack roll is 99 plus, they explode with negative energy. Whew. Okay, so I think I dodged a bullet there. I might potentially be wrong. So let's see if I would have died or how close I'd be to dying. So I'd roll one. I rolled three. He'd only do three damage. So you know what? Yeah, but I'm pretty sure that's if he does the damage. So I would just move down one. But I did just do over 100 on that roll. So yeah, that's awesome. All right, let's see what's going to happen. He attacks me. He does a 63. Uh, so he definitely hit me. So he's going to do 1d4 damage. Where's the d4? Where's the d4? There it is. Four points of damage. Uh, I'm not quite sure if I can block it because I use all my actions. But that might have been the last turn. So, uh, we'll continue onward. He did 48. So, um, my defense is only 39, so he does... Oh, no, that's my attack. So, I, I, I attacked him. Good. Boom. He's going to come back, attack me, and he did 28. You stink. All right, so we're rolling it up again. He actually has negative one defense, so that was 37 defense, and I just hit 39. You did. Well, you're already dead, but you're more dead. All right, so we awoke the dead, but no worries. We got out of here. Um, should we search? What do you guys think? Uh, I'm going to search. I'm actually going to cheat a little bit. We're just going to... I want to see what happens if you actually do, uh, if we would have got the good roll. So we're just going to pretend that we did roll a six on our awareness, and we'll read story moment 90 to see what happens. Wait, wait, uh, inside you see a half desiccated... Oh, we already did that. So essentially... Oh, wait. Either, mo either way, you're going to get the, the freaking ring. Oh, that stinks. Okay. I also think when you do a search token, you potentially get an item. Um, so, yeah. Continuing onward, we're going to get to the exit right here. We have successfully reached the exit. Woohoo! So let's see what happens. All right. Uh, okay. We have reached our goal. Check out all the map features listed on the next page. Uh, continue the story, but walk quietly. The dead are story. On this map, your skin curls, read story, man. Oh. Oh, read, read 16, read 90. We did that, right? Yeah. So we would be on to chapter two. Uh, chapter two, Into the Darkness. You pass through the doors of the mausoleum. So at this point, you could potentially uh, stop, I guess. I believe that's how this would work. Um, 
How much further do we have? You know what? I might just finish this. I might just finish this entirely. So this might be a whole gameplay of this. It's solo. Which I might have done some things incorrectly. And if I did do too many things incorrectly, then I'll do a, a redone version of this potentially with fixed things. Uh, but if I did too much wrong, then I probably won't. So, uh, chapter two, Into the Darkness. Chapter skirmish table, creatures encountered, dice roll ten. Uh, not exactly sure what that means. You pass through the doors of the mausoleum to discover that the back of the wall has crumbled, exposing an entrance to the caverns under Nurian's Hollow. It is dark. It smells of decayed meat. Your senses tell you to run, but your bravery edges you through the hole in the wall. Story skill check. Nerve plus four. I have nerve plus two. All characters enjoy the dark without letting your fear get the better of you. Confidence surges through you. The darkness penalty received as the next map is reduced by two. Oh, man. We're actually going to need a new map, but we'll get to that next. Uh, if I fail, though, you must continue forward. You know that for certain. However, fear grips you in its quivering embrace as you dread that lies ahead becomes spooked, which is going to be a condition. So we're going to roll a d10 to see what happens. And we got a 6, so we are not nerved. The darkness penalty you received in the next map is reduced by 2, so which means we're probably going to have to go to the rule booklet to see what darkness penalty actually means. But we will do that. So we are inside of the mausoleum, which is nice. It's double-sided. Thank you. Uh, so this is the mausoleum. We're going to start right here. Uh, darkness is in effect, so we'll put out this darkness token so we do realize that. And as I wanted to mention, this is the promotional stuff right here. I'm sure yours is probably going to look a little bit nicer, shinier. Uh, oh, we have a night stalker. We have two night stalkers. What in the world? Holy moly. We are really getting into some stuff right here. Uh, so you're actually going to see how combat works, which means I am going to have to go through the rule booklet. Uh, so bear with me on that one. So we're going to have two Night Stalkers set up in two different zones. So let's go ahead and get the Night Stalker. Night Stalker, Undertaker, Abomination. Night Stalker. I'm not seeing the Night Stalker. Um, hmm. It says N1, N2, 3, 2, no. So Bat Swarm, Abomination, Highwayman, Human Mob, Undertaker, Werewolf, Wretched Hag, Otharian, Rabid Wolf, Restless Spirit, Night Stalker. Oh, I just missed it. I can't read. So we have a Night Stalker. We're not going to be doing the skirmish. We're actually going to be doing the full blown Night Stalker. So look at him. Uh, two or three, so they're each going to have a Vita of 14, a Might of plus two, and a Defense of 46. And wow, the Night Stalker's attack has a power die of zero. It is transformed into a Werewolf. And So yes, so potentially the Night Stalker can turn into that, so we will look for our Night Stalker. Uh, we're looking for our Night Stalker tokens right over here, and we can put them on the board. Oh, so yes. Those are actually kind of cool looking. I mean, they're not miniatures, obviously, but those are pretty neat. So we're going to have two Night Stalkers creeping around on the board, and we'll see what happens. Now, normally I think you just set these guys down, but since I have extra little things, I'm actually going to set them up so they look a little bit cooler. Uh, where's another thing to set it up? Oh, we use this guy right here. This should work. Oh, this should work. So we have our two Night Stalkers going down on us. That's not the right expression at all. Okay, so we have again two Night Stalkers we are ready to fight, and uh, we got to search. Our exit zone is right here. Uh, the caves are dark, damp, and cold. You trip and fumble, trying to find your way in the darkness. Faintly luminous mushrooms provide the only evidence that you have not left the world and stepped into Hades. The passageway is narrow. You become claustrophobic and have to take deep breaths to calm yourself. <gasps> Suddenly, you see movement up ahead. Barely noticeable in the dark as figures stealthily close on your position. So darkness, page 23, darkness. I like this. I like the fact that they include like where exactly to look for this kind of stuff in the rule booklet. That's a, that's a great idea. Darkness is an effect that negatively impacts a character's effectiveness in combat. Combat that occurs in darkness con confers a minus 5 might to all melee attacks and minus 10 to all range. So essentially, I would lose my plus 5 might. However, since I, uh, I, I passed the story skill check... I'm only going to be losing three. So essentially, this is now down to plus, uh, plus two instead of plus five. A character holding an equipped light source, such as a torch, does not take these penalties. Darkness has no effect on creatures. Okay. So, our goal is to defeat the Night Stalkers in an encounter, both of them, check out the search location on the map, 
Once combat and the choose your path uh, below have been completed, you can immediately place your character in the next zone. Uh, you range attack your a pile of debris along the passage. Perhaps it holds something of interest. So I'm going to have to go search there. Um, okay. So we're going to see how this works. Uh, and uh, so I believe we move first. So we're going to have four movement. And I really am low on health. That is not good. So I don't know if this is an action I'm allowed to do right now. But we're, we're going to use our recover four. We're going to recover four damage. Uh, one, two, three, four, because I really think so. And I think at some point I probably would arrest, so we're going to assume that I have five might, because I have a feeling we're really going to need this might because I'm going to be fighting f two freaking night stalkers. Uh, so let me go four spaces. One, two, three, four. And then they are going to have, uh, let's see, their movement is four. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Four, and um, I don't have to roll or anything at the end of my turn uh, because, uh, well, I'm good like that. Uh, but that was just in the last one. So one, two, three, four, I guess. And then one, one, two, three. This does not look good. All right, we're going to have to see how this works out. Uh, I actually, you know what? One, two, three. I'm assuming they're probably going to take one at a time. So he's going to attack me first and... He has, let's see, so I believe I'm rolling, you were severely damaged with your nails, alright, so he's got might plus 2, defense 46, so we're going to be rolling our 100 sided die to see what's going to happen, he attacks me first I do believe, and he has rolled a 31, so that's not too bad, he gets a might plus 2, so he's at 33, which means he has not successfully attacked us. Um, now I am going to need to read what these guys look down here, so bear with me and we will find out together what those mean on an attack. Uh, because I read that part and encounter combat. So, uh, the encounter turn. Encounter turn is a span of game time that takes for all the characters and creatures to come back to complete their turns. Uh, move. A character can move, for example, can so I move and then I act. So I can attack, activate, attempt, blah, 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 ability, equip, trade, character movement, attacking. So yeah. Devastating strike, dying in combat, ghosts in combat, companions in combat, creature turn. So they move and they attack. And they choose a moment of targets and names. Creature movement. Creatures follow the same rules for movements as characters. Targeting. The targeted dice, see below, the attack dice. Alright, so they did not successfully attack me. And, no, oh, special instructions. So the special instructions are up here. If the Night Stalker attack has a power die of zero, which this one did not, it is transformed into a werewolf. Okay, so we're good on that. Uh, devastating strike at fault. If a creature's unmodified unmodified percentile roll results in a hundred, uh, should they have performed a devastating strike? Uh, which means they're going to take another attack. Okay, so that's not good. So I'm not quite sure what these right here are meaning. I'm sure it's just eluding me. One through four, five through eight, nine through zero. Special instructions. No, that's not part of it. Auras. Some creatures can create aura effects, usually due to special instructions on their creature cards. See the special instructions section below. Uh, no, we're not reading. Ooh, I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit puzzled on this. Um, savage attack. You were savagely attacked with long nails. Eight through ten. You know what? I'm going to guess that if he success, yeah, I'm a noob. This is easy. Uh, I'm pretty sure. So if he would have successfully attacked me, since it doesn't actually show how much attack he's doing, like normally it would show right here what happens. Uh, one through seven, it's a savage attack. Eight through ten, it's a hellish hell. So luckily he did not successfully attack me. So I will now attack back him, maybe. And if this guy moves. Not sure if this is a back and forth or how exactly this works. Uh, we're in uncharted territories here. 
because uh, as I mentioned, I'm trying to keep this on the shorter side, so I'm not reading too in depth to the rule booklet. So 62, uh, so that was a 62, which means it would be a hit. Uh, his defense is only 46, so that is great. Uh, so I'm going to be doing damage. I believe I do. How much damage do I do? He's got a beat of 12. I believe I do six points of damage. Yeah, sweet. Okay, is that right? Yeah, six points of damage. Yes. Oh no, I roll a d6 to see how much points of damage I do. Do I remember reading that? So I read that. I do four points of damage. Great. So. Okay, so we do four points of damage. So he is down to ten points, and we'll use this to signify his health. Bada boom. Um, and now I assume this guy would now move. I believe that's how it works. So he'd go one, two, three. And I think he's also attacking me. I'm pretty sure that how this is going to work out. So we now have two Night Stalkers who are attacking me. Or maybe it's back and forth. I'm not quite sure. Uh, and So yes, we're just going to do this the hard way. And we're going to assume that he attacks me first. And he has ruled a 69. So he has successfully attacked me. And we'll keep his health track over here. Uh, so he is going to do some damage. We'll roll a d10 to see what happens. So he rolls a 6. You were savagely attacked with long nails, causing 1d6 plus 1 damage. So, oh, he's doing 6 points of damage. I might not survive this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This is looking painful. This is looking bad. So at this point, I now, um, it's now my turn, I do believe. So I'm going to attack this guy. This guy with only 10 health. And, um... Oh no, I, he attacks me and then I attack him back. You know what, I think this is probably just a one at a time kind of thing, I'm going to guess. So we're actually going to go boom, 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 right there, I think it was. And then this, that, we're just going to use that as his attack, so now it's my counter attack. So we got a 79, which means we have successfully attacked him, which means we roll a d6. What's going to happen? We do six points of damage. Take that, buddy. So he's down to four points of damage. Uh, so yes, continuing onward, he's going to attack me again. Let's see what happens. 65. Ow! He is really putting a hurting on me. Uh, let's see. We roll the d10. And he's got a 4, which means he's going to do 1d6 plus 1 damage. Oh, another 7 points of damage. You might see me die here, folks. Yeah, you probably will see me die here. All right, so I'm going to attack him once again. I'm, oh, you are so mine with the 85. Take that, bro. Uh, so yes. We can defeat him right now. This is a four. Two! No! <laughs> so he's at two health. And things are looking things are looking bad right now. Uh, so he's going to attack me again. Let's hope he misses. He rolls a 50. My defense is 39. Oh, man. Oh, no, I have my special ability. So yes, we're going to... Okay, so we can use this. So let's see what he rolls here. What kind of damage he's doing? He's doing a two, so it's a savage attack. So he's doing, God, six points of damage. But I'm going to use one of my, my abilities right here to roll a d4 and to track three. So he's only doing three points of damage. One, two, three. Uh, so then we counterattack. Let's see if we can knock this guy out. Let's see if we can at least knock one out before I die. Uh, 89. So, yes, yes, die, die, die. He's dead. Boom. Bye bye. Uh, so he has successfully been defeated. I do believe that is how that worked there. I might have done that incorrectly, and if so, I apologize. Um, so, he is now dead. However, this guy is now, one, two, going to attack me. And, and things are going from bad to worse. I don't think we're going to survive this, but hey, let's see what happens. So he attacks. He rolls. Is that a hundred? Is that a one? No, that's a hundred. He's rolled a hundred. Son of a biscuit. Okay, so he has rolled a hundred... Which means he is now a werewolf. Cool. Cool. Alright, so he's turned into a werewolf. And the werewolf token looks much more ominous. This looks really bad. You want to see me die spectacularly. I, I just died spectacularly. Uh, so how this works is if the Night Stalker's attack has a power die of zero, it is transformed into... Oh, no, no. A power die. Oh, so that one. He did not. He just really hurt me really badly. So he's still the Night Stalker. Uh, so he's going to roll the d10 to see what happens. He's rolled a 5. He's got a Savage Hal. And he's going to do 5 points of damage, which would kill me. Which might kill me. But I can I can use 1 power and cancel 4. So it's only doing 1 damage. 
I still have a shot. You're saying there's a shot? There's a shot. All right, come on. We can do this. We can do this. Hopefully, we're doing it somewhat correctly. But if not, as I mentioned, I will uh, I'll put an addendum into this video to, to correct some things. So 83. Yes, that is a solid attack. We have attacked this guy. All right, let's see what we're going to do. We do five points of damage. Take that. Take that, buddy. So he's at nine health. Do I have anything now? I, I don't think I can use anything that's going to help me. Oh, can I use my salve? Is that something I can do? Let me look. Let me look. Can I use the salve? I'm pretty sure I can't use the salve, but we might use it anyway just so we can potentially finish this 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 adventure. Because uh, I do want to see how it ends. And I imagine if you're still watching this, which I'm sure there's a couple people who still are, you would like to see how it ends as well. So I'm pretty sure I can't use this salve because I'm in the middle of combat. We're going to kind of skate the rules and say, yeah, oops, my salve. My salve kind of blew up in my pocket when the, the Night Stalker attacked me, so I recover four damage. One, two, three, four. Uh, so yes. And, and this game seems like it could be very difficult playing solo, but as I mentioned, I don't have the solo rules, so I'm really kind of winging it on this. Uh, so, continuing onward, he has nine health, and he is about to attack us again, and let's see what happens. He has done a zero, zero. So he's got zero. He, yeah, I don't, <laughs> okay, he's got zero. Okay. Uh, and the Night Sucker has a power die of zero, which I think uh, these ones I'm pretty sure. So, yes, he just missed. Great. Do I hit him? 72! Take that! We're gonna kill you, buddy! With four points of damage. Take it, take it, take it. So he's down to five points of damage. We might defeat this guy yet. Alright, so let's see. He's doing 83. Okay, that one's clearly a hit. So what's he doing? I'll roll this one to see what happens. He's rolled a five savage attack. Which means he's going to be rolling this. He rolls a four. I'm going to try and use one of these to cancel it out. And I've canceled out two, so one, two points of damage. And we might beat him. We might beat him. Come on, buddy. Good attack. We got a 60, which will get through his defense, which means bada boom. We can finish him off right here with a number that I used the wrong die. I think he was at five health. That's what I'm going to assume he was at. One! Son of a monkey! We are at four. He's got four health left. We're having an epic, epic encounter right now with this Night Stalker. All right, he attacks again. He hits an 89. That's a pretty good, pretty good one, Night Stalker. I'll give you that. Oh, we gotta roll this guy first to see. He rolls a one, so he's doing a regular attack. Boom! Two, three points of damage. We're gonna, we're gonna use one of our last powers left to try and mitigate some of that, and we mitigate three, which means we mitigate everything. Yes! All right, come on. Back on the offense. 83. Now we're rolling good. All right, so we're going to roll this. See what we get. We got a 5. Boom! Get out of here, son! We have successfully defeated him. We might have cheated there, but hey. Like I said, not quite sure. Going by the seat of our pants, because I really don't want to have to edit this too much or look through the rule booklets on camera too much. So, uh, we have defeated the two Night Stalkers. We're going to go here, and we're going to search for next turn. And let's see what happens. Immediately following combat with the Night Stalkers. You defeat the strange men that attempted to ambush you. Who were they? Why were they here? You pray to find answers further in. As you catch your breath, you hear, hear, you hear a faint scuffling. A faint scuffling sound behind you. Choose your path. Something is coming. What should you do? Hide and see what is heading this way. Read Story Moment 55. Be bold and head towards the disturbance. Read Story Moment 3. Really? Really? This is this is bad news. Uh, I have five Vita left. You know what? We're going out in a blaze of glory. We are, we are heading. Be bold and we're going to head towards the disturbance. We're going to read story moment three. A flurry of bats rush down the hall straight at you. Skirmish with a bat swarm. All right, so this could be worse. This could be worse. Bat swarms can't be too bad, right? They can't be too bad, right? Right? All right, let's see what we're dealing with here. Moon Priest, Flesh Eating Skull, The King Dead, uh, Rabid Wolf, Wretched Hag, Other Man, Bat, Bat, we're looking for bats, bats, I don't see the bats, Bat Swarm, and yes, Bat Swarm, all right. So, ooh, lose 1d4 Vita, we only have 1d, ooh, I don't know if we're gonna survive this. All right, so we are facing the Bat Swarm, we will roll our d4 first to see where we're gonna be at. We roll a two, all right, so they're gonna have plus one damage, so this is, this is good, all right. So they attack first, and they got a 92. Come on, bats. Give me a freaking break. So we lose two Vita, and we're not going to pay to cancel it out just yet. One, two. Uh, so yes, continuing onward. Now I'm going to attack the bats, 
and I got a 24! Gah! Terrible. All right, so I miss. They attack again. Oh, we get rid of this Night Stalker now. They do a 45. My defense is 39, so they're going to attack again. They might kill me right now. They only do one. All right, so I can take that. Boom. Uh, oh, they do plus one damage, so they do two. So technically we should be dead, which means we're going to try and mitigate that last roll of two. So yes, they don't. we're at three health. My, like I said, might be cheating here, but I just want to kind of give you guys a feel for how the game plays a little bit. Uh, so we might die to this bat swarm. Let's try and do our attack. We got a 43, which is going to hit it. So yes, now they have minus one damage and minus five might. All right, we got a good shot at this. We got a good shot at this. No, I think I have minus five might. I think I've been reading this improperly. I'm pretty sure that we have minus, we do minus one damage and minus five might, but that wouldn't make any sense because they don't have might. I'm not quite sure. All right, so 80, they do an 800. They do an 80, which means they are going to attack. Uh, this is bad, this is bad. They could potentially kill us, but luckily we still have one power so we can cancel out, mitigate anything. So let's see what happens. They do three points of damage. We're going to use our final power to mitigate the damage. Mitigate one, which means they only do two points of damage, which leaves us with one health. Which means we need we need to beat the bats to right now or we're gonna die. Come on. Come on! 90! 900! Take that, bats. You are diggity down dead. Bats are defeated. Get out of my face. We gotta continue the story at least for a little bit longer. Alright. So read story moment three. Um we would search. You encounter a large cavernous area. It is faintly illuminated by beams of moonlight entering through skylights high in the cavern walls. Standing in one of these moonbeams is a dark figure. Only one side of his face is visible, and the skin, touched by the light of this moon, seems to shift and bubble in a most unsettling way. The figure turns towards you. When he steps out of the moonlight, his face seems perfectly normal. In the back of the cavern, you see a man hanging upside down by his feet, surrounded by hooded figures. It's the priest! With a snarl and a leap, the man before you attacks. If the red story marker is in play, Ulthurian will close in on the character, possessing it and the ring, shouting, It is mine! That stone! Give it to me! You also notice that what you thought was a pearl sitting in the ring is actually a polished stone, which glows very faintly like moonlight. Any attempt to remove the ring fails! So I have the red character marker, unfortunately. I cannot get rid of this damn ring. I'm going to die if this beast gets to me. What am I to do? I will fight. Even if it means death, this is what I am here for. Story moment 25. I must get rid of the ring at any cost. If I cut it off, I may have a chance. Read story moment 80. We're going to stand still here. Because I'm going to die if I fight. And I'm probably going to die if I cut off the ring. So we're going to cut it off. We're going to see what happens. Then we're going to read the rest of this. Just give you a glimpse. And then we're probably going to call this. So read 80. This is the only way if this monster focuses solely on me. I won't last a minute. This is going to hurt. With a deep breath, you slice off your finger at its knuckle. You're screaming pain. Oh, man. The bad news. Lose T2 D4 Vita and receive a minus 5 penalty for the remainder of the story. Wow. Even worse, the affliction snatches up the finger containing the ring and swallows it whole. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, we would still have to fight this guy. It would still be bad news. We are totally freaking dead. Uh, yes. So we died, which means we would now turn into ghosts. But obviously, since we're playing solo, uh, that's that's not the case. Um, so we'll just continue on so you can get a feel for the story because we are just about done with this. Uh, if you died in battle, actually, we can read story moment four and see what happens. You awaken at the Austerlig Gypsy Camp, confused and disoriented. As you gain your bearings, you learn that you were all found unconscious and dying in an empty cave within Nurian's Hollow. The priest you were here to save was also found, slashed to ribbons and beyond saving. You anguish at your failure and vow to remain steadfast. Othirian is no longer within Nurian's Hollow, but you fear that fate may force you to meet again. The town of Ostalink is slowly recovering now that Othirian has departed. You hire transportation back to the Church of the Crossroads, to tell you the cur to tell the curator what transpired, he is devastated over the death of the priest. But due to his strong spirit, he quickly recovers. He tells you that a new priest will be sent for with all haste. The darkness will be sure to take advantage of this abstinence. Um, so yeah, that would continue on the, into chapter three. Now let's just pretend that I actually succeeded. Uh, so I, then I would try to save the priest, 
from the confinement before he dies, which would lead to another map, and I'd have to deal with Moon Priest, and then Otherian, which would be a big guy. Uh, I would have to encounter Otherian, the Changer. He is a difficult foe, as are all afflictions. Any character who holds the red story marker, which I would have uh, for earlier when I uh, when I got that from uh, grabbing the stone, I believe it was, uh, of will be targeted by Ethereum every turn if possible. So essentially, normally Ethereum might target different people, but if you have the red Tory marker, he's going to attack you every time. Uh, if the red marker is not in play, control combat as normal. Uh, also encounter two Moon Priests. Um, so yes, there's a map skill check. The Priest is running out of time. You need to quickly untie him from his bonds. So you do a trickery thing. And if you win this battle, if you were able to free the priest from his restraints in time, read story moment 30. So we'll read that, and then we will, uh, all characters, if you did not free the priest, read story moment 99. All characters receive 10 coins and 10 lore. If a character has the red story marker and has been killed or had the finger removed, they receive the ring of moonlight artifacts. So you might actually get an artifact. So that's, that's cool. That'll do something neat. Uh, plus one damage and plus five against a certain character. That's pretty cool. Place the group marker on the Church of the Crossroads. If any character has learned ability by collecting lore, they may use it to do abilities. So then you'd go on to your next thing. So let's just see what 30 does. And then we'll flip around the camera and I'll give you my impressions on it. The form of Ethereum now lies motionless on the floor of the cabin, his body slowly reverting back to human form. You hear a soft moan from the other side of the chamber, where the priest sits against the cavern wall. You rush over and help him to his feet. He thanks you and says, I had just started to uncover the secret of the hollow when Ethereum captured me. Within lies a strange mineral stone that shifts man into animal. It's like a drug, intoxicating to those who use it. It's what I extracted from the animal that was brought to me. Ophirion traveled here from the Northlands to dig out of the hollows for the stones. He raved it would make him stronger. Now that is behind us. Let us pray and obtain a blessing. All characters receive six Vita. Vitality is already returning to the town of Ostalus. In appreciation, they hire transportation to take you and the priest back to the Church of the Crossroads. That's really nice, Ostalink. The priest warns you to be on guard, for he feels that this event was just a prelude for things to come. Dun dun dun! And that was the first two chapters of Folklore, The Affix, Affliction, um, which are kind of tutorial chapters. So I'm going to flip the camera up, and I'll give you my impressions on this. Um, so I just got a chance to play it, and I do want to mention, as I mentioned throughout this, I might have made some errors. I might have made a lot of errors. And if, if that's the case, then I'll go in, I'll put addendums, and, and fix what I did incorrectly. Because as I mentioned, this was my first time going through this. Uh, this does not actually contain uh, the solo rules quite yet. So I was just kind of winging it there, trying to learn the gameplay so I could teach it to other people. And obviously, with other people, I'll, I'll be trying to do everything properly. But with you guys, I tried to kind of speed up the process, even though this is a really long video, longer than most of my other videos. So what are my thoughts on Folklore of the Affliction? Um, kind of ticked off. Main reason I'm ticked off is because I want to dig deeper. Uh, if you could not tell, I really enjoyed this. This was, this was really cool. I like the idea of leveling up and keeping everything in your own bag and this episodic content. Um, the, the dice rolling, as you can tell, I'm a noob to this kind of dice rolling, but, but it's exciting. I like the dice rolling. Um, I like the skirmishes, I like the battle, I like how uh, the skirmishes are a little bit shorter than the battles, and the battles are much more difficult, they're going to do much more damage. That was really kind of cool. Um, so, overall, I'm really digging it, I'm excited to see where it goes from here. I mean, there's tons of different locations on the map, which means they're going to be doing different things, there's different artifact cards, different road events, all sorts of things. It looks like there's going to be tons of variability in this game. Uh, so, my initial impressions on it uh, are that this seems like, uh, with stream I mean obviously you're gonna need specific solo rules to play the game uh, but solo wise this seems like this could be a very fun solo game where you could potentially come to it you know drop an hour hour and 30 minutes come back to it another time really continue on the story I was enjoying the story I was digging that you know I, I like the little the humor there where you're where you're trying to decide if you're gonna do this you're gonna do that you beat up the uh, the grave digger but the grave digger as you saw really kind of put a whooping on me I like that. I enjoyed the story, and I, I really would like to see where it goes from here. So uh, overall, first impressions, Folklore of the Affliction, really enjoyed it. It definitely seems like it's going to be the kind of game, though, where you, you're going to have to invest a good deal of time, not only into learning the game, but then also, you know, going through all these stories and chapters. But if that looks like it might be something for you, this definitely... Uh, this definitely seems like a cool game to check out. So that is uh, my initial gameplay, which, as I mentioned, might be terribly off of Folklore the Affliction. If you enjoyed this content, please be sure to click on the subscribe button down below or in the comments below. Uh, you know, don't leave it. 
just let me know if I did something wrong. If you know how this game is played. Uh, and thanks for your time, YouTube.